Hello, precious one. Welcome to Kate Star with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Nina AJ. Hi, hi, children. Hi, 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 hi children. children of the Lord. Lord. Amen. Jesus, friend, friend of little children. children. Good news. Christ, Christ died, died for, for me and me. me. God bless all of you. You are all welcome to today's program. Precious ones at home, you are also welcome to today's program. We love all of you and you are all welcome to today's program. We are here to have some fun. We are here to learn. We are here to, to, to go through the word of God through having fun and also what? Acquiring knowledge as well. We love you all. So invite a friend, call mom and dad, sit in the couch, and then let's go through the Bible together. Precious ones, I also have other precious ones that have zoomed in and are here with me this afternoon. And we are here to have some fun. I'm sure you want to know their names, right? I want to know their names too. So precious ones, over to you. Can you introduce yourself to us? Hi, everybody. My name is Ellen Sir from Greater North Chicago District. Hi, my name is Deja Malate, and I'm from Maryland District. Hi, my name is Nicole Chanel Tay, and I'm from Maryland District. Hi, my name is Kayla Dunze, and I'm from Maryland District. My name is James O'Shea, I'm both and I'm from PA, New York District. Hi, my name is Joshua, and I'm from PIWC Orange. Hi, my name is Caleb, and I'm from Wayne District. Hi, my name is Darren Furry from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Declan Furry from Cleveland District. Hello, my name is Jesse Adjumine. I'm from Greater North Chicago District. My name is Deborah, and I'm from Chicago Region. Hi, my name is Ariel, and I'm from the Hartford District. Hi, my name is Esther, and I'm from PIWC Orange. Hello, my name is Joseph, and I'm from PIWC Orange. Hello, my name is Benedict Duval from the Cincinnati District. You are all welcome. You are all welcome, beautiful and, and, and handsome, uh, precious children. You are all welcome to today's uh, program. We love you all. We are in the month of April, and we all know in the month of April, COP USA, we celebrate the, the death and the resurrection of Christ, right? And most Christians around the world also do that. Last week, we did talk about the, the, the Lord's Supper and also what the washing of feet, which uh, we'll go back to have a recap on that and then we'll continue. But before we do that, we need to learn our memory verse. It is always is good for us precious ones to learn our memory verse so we are going to learn our memory verse and then after that we will hit the what we will all hit down there and go and enjoy the story of today so our memory verse for today and i will move it a little bit here okay our memory verse for today is philippians chapter 2 verse 8 Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, and I'm reading from the NIV version. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Amen. 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 So, memory verse for this week and Today is Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. And I read from the NIV version again. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Amen. 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 Precious ones at home, we will advise you to learn all your memory verse. We advise that um, every week as we come on and we teach these memory verses, you take them serious and you learn it because it will go a long way in helping you. Guess how many days in a, in a year? Just imagine if you learn a memory verse every week. Imagine how many memory verses you're going to learn 
in a year. So let's try as much as possible and learn our memory verse. Today, our topic for today is Jesus' death on the cross, the crucifixion of Christ, Jesus' death on the cross. And our scripture readings will be Mark 14, 43 to 51, and Mark 15, 1 to 5, and Mark 15, 22 to 37. But before we read these scriptures, we will let one of our own, our young um, um, prophet, Benedict, I always call him prophet. Uh, he's my second prophet, the first prophet. Uh, one of my prophets, Prophet James, and another prophet, Prophet Benedict. Um, he will give us a summary of what uh, we learned last week, and then we'll go ahead and do the scripture readings for today and continue with our um, our fun. Okay, so Benedict, you can go ahead and um, and give us a summary. Okay, thank you, Auntie Nina. So the summary of last week was we learned about the Passover and the Lord's Supper and the communion. Like you see your parents going to church and getting this type of bread and juice or wine or something. And you always ask, hmm, what are they doing? It's the same thing they did in the past when Jesus and his disciples, Jesus knew he was going to die. So he had a last supper with um, his disciples. It wasn't new, but he just did it. And before that, he washed their feet. And Peter was like, oh, hey, you're the king. Don't wash my feet. Because Jesus, like, strong, I mean, Peter strongly believed in Jesus. So Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you won't be, like, a part of me anymore. Then he said, wash my feet and also wash my head. That's when they ate. And that's when Jesus said, one of you are, is going to betray me. They found out when Jesus said, the one who dipped his hand in the bowl of me will betray me. And he and the Judas, the Scarot, said, you truly don't mean me, but it was him. That's one he was going to betray him, just as Sam prompted him to. Let's find out what happens next. God bless you. God bless you, Benedict. God bless you. Let's find out what happened next. Fantastic. Now, our first reader will read for us Mark 14, 43 to 51. The first reader should read for us. Mark 14, verse 43 to 51. From the NIV version. As he was speaking, Judas, one of the 12, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the Berter had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of, the, one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting him off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. Um, second reader, can you read for us, please? Mark chapter 15, verse 1 to 15. Very early in the morning, the chief priest with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole sardren made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of so many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to ask her? Answer, see how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it 
was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people request. A man called Brabas was in prison with the in institutions who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what they usually what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of Jews? asked Pilate. Knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him, but the priest chief the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Bob Ross instead. What should I do then with the one you call the king of Jews? Pilate asked him. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they all shouted louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Bob Ross to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Amen. Amen. Fantastic reading. Same as Ariel. Um, that was some big words in there. God bless you for reading. Uh, our third reader. Kayla. Mark. Mark 22 verse 27. They brought Jesus into a place called Golgotha, which means the place of stones. Then they offered him wine mixed with Mary, but he did not see. And then and they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. They, the written notice of the charge against him read, "The King of the Jews." They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you are you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priest and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified those crucified him with also heaped insults on him, the death of Jesus. At noon darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three in the morning Jesus cried out in the loud voice. Eliwe, Eliwe, Lama Sabachthani, which mm -hmm. means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. When some of the, when some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elisha. Some ran, filled a sponge with wine and wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered to it to Jesus to drink. Now, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. Down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Amen. Amen. Fantastic reading, um, 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 Caleb. Fantastic reading, Joshua. Fantastic reading, Ariel. God richly bless all of you, precious ones. I all love, I love the, the tone of your voice when you were reading. You see, sometimes we develop the impression that we must do or uh, we must do enough. We have to do, we have to work hard to truly be loved and be used by God. But precious ones, we don't have to work hard to be loved by God. God sent his only son to this world to die for us right? God is truly the author of all activities and everything that happens in our lives. God has a specific plan and a purpose for our lives, right? When we say God has a specific plan and, and a purpose for our lives, precious ones, you don't have to force to be somebody you are not, right? 
when God, when we see God has a specific plan for your life, God knows who you will become when you grow up. He knows that you need to go through A to B to C to get there, or you need to go through Y, Z, and F to get wherever you want to be, right? He knows and he loves us and will always stay with us no matter what, using even what our toughest situations, right? For overall good, when we go through trials and tribulations and we go through, um, we go through difficult times, God comes in, he steps in and delivers us from the hands of the wicked one. My dear one, you are valued in God's eyes. You are precious in God's eyes. You are made, you are, you were created wonderfully and you are fearfully made by God. God knows that what, he knows you by your name. He chose you for a special and a specific purpose. Precious ones. This is just, this is just me from Auntie Nina letting you know that you are special in the sight of God. You are valued in the sight of God. God knows you that you are called Ellen. You are called James. You are called Esther. You are called Darren. You are called Benedict. You are called James. You are called, you are called um, Ariel. You are called Caleb. You are called everybody he knows of their names. We serve a mighty God. But before we even come with questions and try and discuss things, I just want you, I just want to take your mind a little bit back. Remember, even since the first sin in the Garden of Aden, right? Sin was what? Sin had to be paid for. When Adam and Eve first sinned, God killed an animal to make clothes for them, right? Because they found out that what they were not wearing clothes after they, they, they sinned against God. So God has to give them what? A cloth of an animal, a, a, a skin of an animal was used as a cloth to cover them up. Then he punished them by sending them out of the Garden of Eden. For a while in the Bible, we also heard of a sacrifice to God, right? Randomly as someone like Noah when he built an ark and an altar, right? As an offer and as a sacrifice to God. But once God established his people in what? In Abraham, he began the process of redeeming and rescuing us, right? He's his people in the times of Exodus, right? When God what? Send Moses to go deliver his people, the Israelite, right? Suddenly we see God, requiring what sacrifices to pay for what? For sin, precious ones. As we go on with this story, why am I going into the Old Testament? I just want you to know how precious the death of Christ has been for us and is still for us. While the people were in the desert, God gave them laws that includes what? Lots of sacrifices. Every day animal will be killed and what burn as a sacrifice. None of these sacrifice got rid of what? It didn't get rid of sin. All they did was to what? To cover up the sin so that God could dwell among what? His sinful people. We were born as sinners, right? But for God's people to truly live in God's presence, a final sacrifice had to be made. But this time, instead of the people giving their best sheep, their best lambs, right? As a what? As a sacrifice unto God, guess what happened? God sent his only son, Jesus, right? To come to this earth to die for you and I, our sons. Precious ones. Now you get the whole big picture. In the Old Testament, and then in the New Testament. Now, precious ones, the crucifixion of Christ. The floor is open. Yes, Benedict. Well, one thing I learned in my stories was the Lord, after the Lord's Last Supper, it's about Judas. First, my first thought that came to mind was I know Judas died, but how did he die? And the answer was, he got hanged. He hanged himself. But why? 
And that threw me back into the Old Testament because there's this thing back, 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 back. And the first thing came, this is called, this is kind of deep. So I'm about to do, I want to do some research on this. The unforgivable sin, also known as the unpardonable sin. If you commit it, also known as blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven and you will be condemned to hell. Just like back in the Old Testament, Adam and Eve, they committed the unforgivable sin because they knew they weren't supposed to eat the food from the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But they still did. Even though they knew that God has commanded them not even go near to it. They knew what they were doing, but they still do it, did it out of temptation. That's why they got kicked from Eden never to return again. Keyword, never to return again. <laughs> Here is why. The Bible knows this, knows this as chasten. But no buts. People say no buts, no cuts, no coconuts. That's why my brother told me. I said, as much as I love coconuts, the oil is a catch. And this is called chasten. Mm -hmm. The Bible, when God chastens you, it's basically God's version of discipline and punishment. It is not good. Usually, he takes, he usually does something very bad, like he leads, he lets the devil lead you to sin, like Judas. He already made a mistake, but he's going to do another one by killing himself, which is wrong. At least die in peace. You're not supposed to kill yourself. Do not murder. But he still did. Because of his sin. The sin falls into other sin. Also, Adam and Eve version of Chasten, and they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, which is not good. So that is what I learned. God bless you. Great contribution. James' hand was up, and then we'll go to Darren. Auntie, I kind of disagree with um, there being an unforgivable sin because all sins are equal. Because God told Adam and Eve not to eat a fruit. And then, okay, let's just stay in the Old Testament for a minute. Then he went um, a couple hundred years later and told the entire group of Israelites that they should go into the promised land. Then they went and they saw the people just because they were big and they, they, they turned back on God. So I don't think it's like that there's an unforgivable sin per se. There are many types of sin. And if it was, the sin was unforgivable, then there'd be no need for God to come and send Jesus to die and wash our sins for us. Because if he chastened us per se, there, he would have already punished us and we'd, we, we'd be walking around punished. There'd be no need for Jesus to come and give us salvation in order for us to go to heaven and stay with him forever. So that's just my little piece on it. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Benedict, do you want to respond to to what James just said, or is it a new yes. thing? You want to yes. respond? Okay. Then I'll come to there. Like I said, there always is a catch. You know, nowadays, God is forgiving and loving. So yes. Sometimes he'll forgive you because that plan, as, as Auntie Nina said, God has a plan for you. So most likely, God is not going to change that anytime soon. You know, God always sticks to the plan, and that's a fact. So God can always be loving and change his mind. But in those type of cases when it needs to happen, like Judas need to portray, portray Jesus, that needs to happen. So... God had to do what he had to do. James, are you responding to Benedict or you have a different question? I'm kind of responding to Benedict though. Okay, then you can go ahead. So I actually think that God um, puts um, people like that, well, people like Judas in our lives for a reason because if Judas didn't betray Jesus, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have salvation. If you know, like if David didn't go and get Bathsheba, Solomon wouldn't have been born. Israelite wouldn't have prospered for his entire reign. There are these people who come; they're meant to like. If if Joseph's brother didn't sell him into slavery, 
he wouldn't have saved Israel. He wouldn't have been promoted. So there are these people that come into our life. God specifically sends bad, bad people and turns it around for our good. Amen. God sent people in our way and it turns out for our good, right? Before, thank you. Thank you, Benedict. Thank you, uh, James. Fantastic um, contributions and, and discussion. I'm loving this already. Yes, let's go to Darren. Darren, what do you have for us? Um, I wanted to add to what James said when he said that everything, even though even though certain things might happen at a certain time, they always end up good. Because when you read Romans 8, 28, it, it says that, and we know that all things work together to them that love God, to them who have been called according to his purpose. So that means that if you always remain in God's will, at, then you should know that in the end, everything will work together, even if you don't get what you were expecting. Fantastic contribution. Um, Daron, yes, I think your brother's hand is up. God bless you. <laughs> yes, it also says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and you make your path straight. So that means that if you follow your own path, then basically you don't know the direction to go. But then you have to go in the right direction only if you can trust in the Lord. God bless you. God bless you, Declan. God bless you. Fantastic answer. As we have learned as through the discussion that is going on, Benedict, I'm going to come to you. We are getting to know that word. All sin are sin. We don't have a, a, a big sin or a lower sin or a medium sin. All sin are sins, right? So in the oldest days, when you sin, then a lamp has to be killed, right? But glory be to God. He said his only what? Son. The final sacrifice has to be done, right? The crucifixion of Christ. And God placed Judas there. I feel so sorry for Judas. I don't know, I don't know why Judas was the one that was paid to, to do that. But you see, God, because of God's plan, Judas was there at that time. He was, was the one that has to, to do that, right? Sometimes... God places people in our lives, right? For a reason, right? That's why sometimes if you follow bad friends, you, it leads you into trouble. If you follow good friends, it leads you into what? Doing what is right. So before I called on Benedict, let me call Jane, um, Jesse, since he has not spoken. And then we'll go to Benedict and then James and Darren. To add on about what Declan said about trust, it also reminded me of the story of Abraham and his wife, Sarah. They were 190 years old before they had their first child, but because they had trust in the Lord, he delivered for them. Amen. Amen. Because he had trust in the Lord, Abraham and Sarah were able to what? have a son, right? They had a son. And remember, uh, Jesse, because it was in the olden days, God was told Abraham to use his son as a sacrifice, right? But glory be to God. Now we don't have to do that, right? The final sacrifice has been made, and that is the blood of Jesus. God bless you, James. Fantastic example. Let's go to Benedict. I still want to tie into like that point that there's God does that. He chastens because when Jesus was placed there, there was always a leeway. When the devil attacks, there is always a way to escape, or there's always a way to avoid or dodge his blows. That's why they are in those positions. Even though it's part of God's plan, I still think they could have avoided that and dodged the devil's attacks. So you were saying that they, if even though it was God's plan, Judas could have avoided that. The the, but if that had happened, where would we have been? Auntie Nina, the guy's yes. name is Judas Iscariot. You can tell he's up to no good. <laughs> you, you can only tell he's up That's to no good. That's a good one. That's a good one, James. Yes, but if Judas Iscariot, if he he was no worried, if he hadn't done that, do you think Jesus? Jesus would have be, uh, Jesus would have died on the cross. No, but my point. Yes. Yes. Saying yes. yes. Let's ask from yes. Darren. And it's I'm also saying the yes. Question, you're saying yes. Okay, Darren. What do you also think? I think yes, yes because 
um, it, it was destined. He, when, the, when they were taking Jesus to, to Pilate, no, when they were taking him to the, like when Judas was, hide, was handing him over to the men, this is what Jesus said. He said, however, the scriptures must be fulfilled, meaning that it would have happened you know, no matter what he did, because that was the reason why he came to the earth. And it was God's will. And God's will always be rose. Because when you read Proverbs 19.21, it says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is mm. the Lord's purpose that prevails. So yeah. when you see this, and you, when, when you read, when you continue to read on, before they would have, Judas would have handed him over to, G, to um, the temple people, he, he, Jesus was praying that, please, if it is your will, let's take this cup out of my suffering. Because he mm. didn't want to die. I don't yeah. think anyone wants to see that. Yeah, yeah. He didn't want to die. Jesus that was sent to this world to come die for our sins, when the time came, didn't want to die anymore, right? He said, God, take this away from me, right? He can see, he can foresee that this is just going to be a very painful death, right? So he didn't want to die. But what? Because of the plan God had for him, he has to go through with it. Right? And I'm sure the enemy, the devil, do you think the devil was playing with Jesus' mind too? I'm just thinking. That's why, like, mm, I don't think I want to do this. I want to do yeah, let's, I think talk, yeah, let's talk about that. Do you think the devil was playing um some tricks on his, his head? Like, don't do this. If you do this, then this will that, because the purpose was for him to die, right? So that we'll be saved, right? And now the hour has come. And Jesus is saying, oh, God, let this cup be taken from me. Why would he second guess himself? Um, I the floor is open. Okay. I wanted to say that. I no. think okay. Hold on, Benedict. I have Dacian's hand up. I will pick those that are, are um, I'll, uh, if you're talking too much, I will stop you and let someone else talk. I'll come back to James and Darren and Benedict. Okay. Yes, Dacian, you can go. I think he was second guessing himself because nobody wants to die and mm -hmm. to have their life ended. So when when it was time for him to die on the cross, he was scared scared because he didn't want to lose his life and lose his family and like all be all all the people that cared yeah. about him be all sad. So yeah. So that's why he was second guessing himself on yeah. it, whether he should die or not. Yeah. Hmm. That's a great one. Jason, thank you so much. God bless you. Yes, James. I don't I don't think Jesus was second guessing himself because mm -hmm. you're looking at the guy who can fast for 40 days nonstop mm -hmm. and in that hungry, broken state can still ward off attacks of the devil. Mm -hmm. I think he was expressing human emotions. Mm -hmm. Because me personally, I'm not going to lie to you and say I would love to die. I, no one would love to die. He was just, uh, he, 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 and even he, what's interesting is that if the devil was playing tricks, Jesus wouldn't have invoked the fact that God's will should be done. He will, he, because him being Jesus, him being God, he could have just went back to heaven and let humanity hash it out. But he, even after he expressed his sorrow, he said, let your will be done. So I don't think the devil was playing tricks on him. And I don't think he was second guessing himself too. Fantastic contribution, James. Great one. Yes, who else? So Jesus was not second guessing himself from James. He doesn't feel like, um, as human as we are, he feels like Jesus was just being human, just as you and I, right? Being scared. I don't know um, what is going to happen next, right? As compared to second guessing himself, this is coming from James. Who else? Yes, um, Darren. Then we go to. I wanted Benedict. to say that I think he was definitely second guessing himself because he was half human by then, meaning that still there was some flesh in him. Because when we when when James said that he fasted for forty days and forty nights, but then he was in the spirit, meaning the devil could not do a thing to him. But then right now, he's about to die. If he's about to die, will you be there praying that, God, oh God, I'm praying that this death will go successfully. Oh God, make this death to go successfully. You'll be praying that, God, please, please, I'm praying that you make sure that I don't die. But then he knew that it, it had to happen because he loved us so much. So he came, and even though he was God, and he could literally just say, okay, you know what? I'm tired of being on it. This place is too painful. I'm going back to heaven. He could have okay. done that. He decided not to do that. 
he waited to his purpose. Okay, fantastic. God bless you. James, I will come to you. Ellen, Caleb, Joshua, Ariel, um, anything, Deborah, you want to share? Do you want to contribute anywhere? The crucifixion of Christ, the crucifixion of Christ. You don't have to continue the argument that is going on. What do you know about the crucifixion of Christ? Okay, so you can think through that. Um, I will let James comes and then you can come in. Yes, um, they, after James, we go to Jesse. Yes. Auntie Mina, we left a question about um, if Judas didn't betray Jesus, would he still have died? I think that Jesus would have still have died because like Darren said, it was God's will for him. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees definitely would have had at the top of their to-do list to kill Jesus because these were people with two different ideologies. The Sadducees believed in like actual law and the Pharisees believed in like Moses. They believed everything had to come through Moses. So for people like with two different ideologies, two different mindsets, two different ways of life to just unite together for a common purpose. I think they could have definitely have killed Jesus. And that's what God wanted. He wanted Jesus to die for us so we could have that salvation and have eternal life with him. Amen. Amen. So you think that even if Judas Iscariot has not done that, then the, the, the Pharisees and all those people would have come in. And I know that the Jewish also couldn't stand him, right? Because he was telling him that he's the king of the Jewish and, and they also didn't like him. So I'm also sure as James is saying that um, they will find other ways, other means to what? To have Jesus killed. And remember, I just want to put it at the back of your mind. Remember, Jesus didn't do anything wrong. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. And we all know how it feels when you didn't do anything wrong and you are being accused falsely, right? You didn't do anything wrong. So I want you to think from that perspective, okay? Um, we'll go to Jesse and then Ariel. Jesse, you had your hand up. Ariel, and then we come to Benedict. While we're still talking about the love that Jesus had for us imperfect humans, it reminded me of a very famous memory verse that we all know, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Amen, Jesse. Thank you for sharing with us. Yes, Ariel. I just wanted to agree with James because um, religious leaders like the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees were only looking to kill Jesus because they were jealous of his godlike power and they felt like he was taking the spotlight. So yeah, all they wanted to do was convict him, then kill him so that they can like become the main attraction and mm -hmm. get what they wanted. Awesome, fantastic Ariel, God bless you. So whether uh, Judas is kind of do it or anybody was gonna do it, why? Because that was the plan of God for Jesus that you have to go. The final sacrifice needs to happen. And you, Jesus, you are going to do that, right? How is going to happen if it wasn't G Judas, then definitely something would have happened. That's what we all thinking aloud. If Judas hasn't done that, then this person was the one or these people, this group of people would have still seen to it that this man would die. But I think when they were, do you think that Okay, I'll come back to that. I was gonna ask the question. Do you, let me put the question on the floor, right? So that somebody will remind me later. Do you think that if Jesus, right? Do you think that if Jesus, okay, I'll come back. Yes, it's gone, I'll come back. Yes, uh, we had Benedict, Benedict hand was up. So we'll go to Benedict and then come to James and then we come to the Holy family. Back to the Judas topic. Honestly, I still think that Jesus still would have died because that will, will, that will, will be done and that type of stuff. Even though, he, he, as I said, there's always a leeway to escape the tax. So even if he wouldn't have traded Jesus for some cheap pieces of money, Jesus still would have died because it was the will and the scriptures must be fulfilled. Okay, God bless you. Yes, James. So what's actually sad about this is that Judas did all this just for 30 pieces of silver. I mean, silver. Really? Okay. Anyway, I was going <laughs> to say... Not even though. Not even though. Exactly. 
Well, I was also going to say that we humans can actually be very easily influenced because mm -hmm. I'm going to bet that the people who were screaming crucify Jesus were the exact same people who were waving palm branches and putting their clothes out for Jesus' donkey to step on. So it's kind of sad how they can just change their minds the next day and just decide to crucify Jesus. I'm thinking like, it's kind of like the plebeian effect where one person says this and everybody in the crowd agrees. So that's like, we can just be as easily influenced. It's sad. It is sad. And I love, I love the direction you're coming from, where you're coming from. But one thing that I want to add to what James just said, remember, is the plan of God right, is the plan. This is the plan of God for that to happen, right? So sometimes even though people get influenced, sometimes things happen for a reason, right? I'm sure the crowd that were saying that, oh, hell Jesus, oh, hell Jesus, Jesus come walk on this, uh, on my clothes, on my clothes and all that. They were the same people saying, crucify him, crucify him. We have such people in our lives today where if the thing is going wrong, they will, they will criticize you. And then when it's going good, they will praise you, right? That is the human nature. And remember, Jesus was human then. So it's, 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 it happens, uh, things happen for a reason. God bless you, James. God richly bless you for coming from that angle. Before I call the rest of you, I call the rest. I have some few questions that I just want to ask some of you, okay? And Esther, I want to ask you this. Esther, can you help me with this? Esther. So, Esther, uh, who betrayed Jesus and how did he do it? Um, Judas is carrot and he did it with a kiss. Oh, he did it with a kiss. You see, kiss, when you do something with a kiss, you expect that it should be love, right? But this person went to betray Jesus and he did it with a kiss. God bless you. Fantastic answer. God richly, richly bless you. Yes, Kayla. Kayla, the chief priest handled Jesus. Handed Jesus over to who? The chief priest handed Jesus over to who? Pilate. Pilate, fantastic, fabulous. God bless you. Mwah. God bless you. That's a great answer. He handed Jesus over to the pilots. Yeah, he did that. Now, um, Nicole, when, when asked if he was the king of Jewish, how did Jesus reply? Nicole, when he was asked if he was the king of the Jewish, how did Jesus reply? I mean, it's okay. Jo Joseph, do you want to try? Yes. Jesus said, yes, is as you say, king of the Jews. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Yes, king of the Jews. You and Nicole, fantastic. God richly bless all of you. God richly bless all of you. So... Um, there are certain things. You see, um, Deborah, when Pilate asked the people if they wanted him to release Jesus, what did the people say? When Pilate asked the people if they wanted him to release Jesus, what did the people say? Okay. What did the people say? Yes, Deborah. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him, crucify him. That was what James was talking about. These were the people that were what? Hailing Jesus. Oh, you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords, right? They were all praising. And all of a sudden they are what? Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. That, do you think that was nice? I don't think that was, right? Yeah, then that is what James was saying. Human, betrayal. Now, Joshua. Joshua, what is significant about the death of Jesus to Christians, to us believers today? What is so significant about the death of Jesus to us? Joshua. What, what's so significant is how God gave his only son to go and die for us humans. We are full of sin and he just sent his son just like that for us, for him to die 
and us to have eternal life. God bless you. God bless you, Joshua. Yes, he sent his only son to come die for us. It shows the love of God for our lives, right? Show the love of God for our lives. God richly bless you. Yes, Ellen. Uh, I wanted to go back to your first question about the kids and um, how um, Jews betrayed God with the kids. I think that's quite ironic since um what do we call the people are worshiping god with the kiss and awe and it even says in um romans chapter 16 verse 16 greet another with a holy kiss all the churches of christ greet you it says the same that you're supposed to greet another mom with a kiss. It's not telling you, Papa, go back. It's not telling you that you should trace someone with a kiss. It's telling you to greet another with a kiss. And he says so far, he was loved with the kiss and adored with the kiss. So I think that's a very hard betrayal. God bless you. God bless you for your great contribution. Nicole, when Jesus came to die on the cross for us, right, he shed his blood. But he was crucified with, with, was Jesus just on the cross by himself or there were other people? And I don't know, can you share a little bit for uh, with us what you know about when Jesus was nailed on the cross? Um, yes, there were actually other people with him. I think there were two other people. Yeah. And... People were saying bad things to Jesus and they were hitting him and like yeah. would still know. saying crucify him, still saying crucify him, right? Mm -hmm. Fantastic, Nicole. Fantastic. God richly bless you. Fantastic. Yes, Jesse. To add on to what Ellen was saying, not only did Judas meet Jesus with a kiss. But he was also acting like friendly. And this this showcases the modern human behavior. That's mm. like James was saying. It shows how we can go from supporting one person to hating them the next second. Amen. Yes. I love that part. We can be laughing with people. But our heart is not pure. Our heart is not with it. Right? As precious ones, we need to let our actions go with our heart, right? Our actions needs to go with our heart. Our actions shouldn't be different from what we are thinking on what is in our heart, right? You can go to the person and let them know what you think and how you feel, right? But those, oh no, that's okay. But in your heart, it's not okay, right? We need to have a heart and our actions, the, the what is in our heart should be able to go with the actions. Yes, James, your hand was up too. And I'll come to Benedict. I was going to say that I don't think um, the Pharisees and Sadducees just captured these because they were jealous of him. I actually think they captured him because they were afraid of him. Because why do you bring soldiers armed with weapons just to see a guy who's praying on a mountain? So they saw Jesus as like a threat to their like popularity and influence because everything they were teaching the Jewish people, Jesus was saying differently. Like the Sabbath day, Jesus was healing people on the Sabbath and he was teaching the Jewish things that um, the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like. So I think it was more like they were, it was more fear was involved rather than them just being mad at him. 
So they were, they were, they were scared of Jesus and what Jesus could do, like healing the sick, raising uh, Lazarus from the dead. They, they kind of what Jesus was doing was intimidating them when they see Jesus. It's like, oh, so we need him dead, right? That's where you're coming from. Hmm, that's a good thinking. God bless you. Fantastic contribution. Yes, um, Benedict, and then we come to Daron and Declan, then I come to Ariel, then I come to Kayla. I'm coming to you, Kayla. So we'll go to Benedict now. As I always say, everything in the past will reflect in the near future before Jesus comes. Like as James said, people will first say, I'll follow Jesus, but then betray them, betray his own master, because he's scared of what's coming in the tribulation. Children, and also adults listening to this, let us learn how to stay planted in the faith. Let us not have a wobbling faith. Let us not build a slanted house, but let us build a straight house on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Let us learn that we have to avoid all this bad stuff. And if somebody better tries to come to us and hurt us, even kill us just because we believe in God, let them kill you. I even say this to unbelievers that I meet in the school. If you tell me that Jesus is not real, I want you to slap my face. If you want to convince me not to believe in Jesus, you can just walk out. Because Jesus is the king. He's king of everything. And I believe that he's coming to catch us, come to take us home one day. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Caleb, you want to share with us um, the blood of Jesus? What the, the blood of Jesus, how precious is it? Do you want to share with us? The blood of Jesus protects us. So like, like it's when we're going to sleep, he's going to be there protecting us. And like he protects us wherever we go. If we're like going out, driving, so many things can happen, like a car accident and or police stop or something can happen and um the blood is always there to protect us the blood is always there for us jesus came to die the blood protect us the blood word is there for us it hides us right it showers us the blood of jesus is so precious god bless you fantastic answer um um, um caleb now we come to darren you can share with us the crucifixion of Christ. Come from any angle. Let's talk about that. Okay, let's talk. Share with us anything that comes in your head. Yes, Darren. I wanted to say that just like the crucifixion, some people died without like without knowing what they were getting into. But unlike them, Jesus was dying for us, even though he didn't have to. Because in the Bible, during the time of prophet Elisha, he realized that there was a famine one time and he, pro and he prophesied that the one person, an officer in King Ahab's, like, what was it called? An official in King Ahab's palace would, would witness people gaining food and buying them during the famine. And he still he would not get a single drop of this of this food. And that was because, because the next day it happened and what happened was that he got trampled by all the people who wanted food. So when mm. people died, he didn't actually know what he was getting himself into. And because of that, he paid for it with his life. Fantastic, fantastic. God richly bless you. Joseph, what is crucifixion? What, when we say crucifixion, what does it mean? The crucifixion. Crucifixion is like when you, so you put someone on a wooden cross, you could tie them or nail them onto the wooden cross and then you kind of, and then it's like a punishment. Hmm. So it, it's, it's a form of a punishment. Like, um, like you remember when Nicole said that Jesus was crucified with other two robbers, right? Now, let's talk a little bit about those people. Let's go and talk a little bit because it, it tells us something there. Who can tell us a little bit about when those two robbers was crucified with Jesus, right? What dialogue, what went on, conversation that went on before Jesus finally died? What happened? I need somebody who has, yes, Ariel. I think Jesus said to them that um, 
next thing that they'll know um that they'll see jesus um in paradise they'll see jesus in paradise yeah fantastic god bless you yes um james you can add to it i say james sorry jesse What Ariel is saying is true, but not all of it is true. One robber said that he believes in Jesus and he should take him to paradise. And the other robber was mocking Jesus and saying that they, he should save them. He should save them if he is the king, right? Okay. Yes, uh, Ella, you want to add to it? Yes, I agree with Jesse very much because... Um, that is what happened. I did not believe in the word of God. That that it's quite a for somebody who said he's gonna save um save us and be the earth to be down there. So I think it's also I think we would just see too. Fantastic, great contribution. Now, I will, before Benedict comes in and James comes in, let's look at two, these two people. They are all about to die. That's where I want us to come from. They are all about to die. One sees that even on the cross, one has repented of their sin and the other one is mocking Jesus. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. Yes, James and then Benedict. What I was going to say is that um, as humans, we belong to the second category of people who, who sadly don't repent of their sins and tell Jesus to take them to heaven. Because like it's it said, because the, um, the second robber, his idealism was like, if Jesus was this all powerful God who can take you to heaven, how come he hasn't saved himself yet? How come he's still hanging with us? And the second one repented knowing that Jesus was Jesus and said that when, you, when you're going, take me with you. We don't, we don't, if we haven't accepted Jesus Christ, we won't be like that. We won't, we won't look, he could even be right next to us and we won't even know to tell him to take us, take him with us. So that's, I was just going to say that we should be careful of what we're doing and we should always for, repent to God to forgive us of our sins. Amen. We should always repent of our sins and ask for forgiveness of sins. Why? Because Christ came to die for our sins, right? We don't have to slaughter a lamb, right? To wipe away our sins. Christ has come. The final sacrifice has been done. Christ died on the cross for our sins. So that when, when, so when we sin, we need to ask for forgiveness of sins. And God will forgive us of our sins. Yes, Benedict. We are going to wrap up, okay? Yes, Benedict. I just want to add on to what James said. You always repent, especially before you're about to die. If you don't know when you're going to die, and when the judgment day comes, God just might just say, it's too late now. Also, what happened on the cross, I'll just be like, like, send out Jesus right here. And then there's Robert one. And then this is Rabbi 2. Rabbi 2 is like, if you're the son of mine, if you're the son of God, why don't you save us? Jesus has no reply. Then the other robber who was nice and like actually knew the, the one true king was like, he was, he was sorry. And he just said, when you're going, please take me with you. Tell robber, robber, he got his eyes eaten out by a bird which is what you get for messing with the king. <laughs> then, then Jesus was starting to die, and he died. Which he is, died. Well, he died. Well, I yeah. forget the exact words, but Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Elohim. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. The crucifixion of Christ. Jesus was nailed on the cross. Jesus had a crown of thorns on, and they pushed it, and blood was oozing from his what? From his head. And people were mocking at him. People that were praising him were now mocking him. By his stripes, he was 
suffered his war. He was wounded. He was in pain. But he said, oh God, why have you forsaken me on the cross? And Jesus finally died. When Jesus was dying, when he died, light and darkness, sin, uh, sin, light and darkness, couldn't what it, it couldn't hold together. One has to go. So the whole place became dark. And when he died, right, God took away all our sins away. Oh, hallelujah. God took Amen. away our sins away. Precious one, when we sin against God, let's ask for forgiveness of sin. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus has delivered you and I. We've been saved. Therefore, let us be proud of ourselves and rejoice in the Lord at all times. The blood of Jesus protects us. The blood of Jesus brings us healing. The blood of Jesus gives us hope. The blood of Jesus delivers us from the hands of the evil one. The blood of Jesus delivers us from death right? And that is why we need to be proud in the Lord Jesus. Now we're going to go around finally. Tell us what you have learned. We will start with um, Darren, and then we'll go to Declan, and then we'll go to James. Wait, Auntie, before we, we tell what we learned, I actually have a question. You have a question for the floor. So, okay. when, so when the soldiers put the um, crown on Jesus' head, didn't the crown cut them too? James is asking a question that when they put, if we say that the crown was made of thorns, right? And it was so sharp to the extent that it put pressure and then Jesus was oozing, his face was full of blood. James is asking, those that did that, didn't they also get hurt? Didn't the thorns also cut them? Yes, um, Darren. How do we know that it was the soldiers who actually put the 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 crown on Jesus. Maybe they could have forced Jesus to put the crown on himself because, well, for one thing, the soldiers forced them to carry the cross uh, and Simon too. But then I, what I'm trying to say is that maybe they used some sort of cloak that protected it, them from it or some sort of wood thing that they put on Jesus' head and they left it and then started mocking him. But then what so I'm, you're not sure whether the soldiers put it on or not? Is that yes. what you're saying? Oh. Okay. Okay. Yes, James. Um, Jesse, I don't know why I'm calling Jesse James today. <laughs> yes, Jesse. I agree with what Darren said. We don't know who it was, but whether it was Jesus or. I think his line, um, his thing froze. So let's go to who else hand was that? Yes, um, Joseph. If Jesus died, wouldn't he have gone to heaven? But then if, but then he, uh, he also rose up again. So then he died and then he went to heaven and then he came back and then he rose up. Yes. When Jesus died, he rose up and went, yeah, and went to be with the Lord. He fulfilled scripture. He fulfilled the plan that God told him. He didn't stay dead. He rose up. Great contribution. Jesse, you want to continue what you were saying? Jesse, yeah. I was, hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, Benedict. I have, I have this really big question. What happened? Oh, yeah. then today we're not gonna finish. I was saying that. No, 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 no. it's not the big, but I, it's, it's not common. A big one. Okay. What happened to the people who like died before Jesus came? Before Jesus made that atoning sacrifice, did he go to hell and free their souls? Or did they just go, did they just remain where they were currently at? I'm confused. Are you talking about the Old Testament or the, like in the New Testament before Jesus died? Like before Jesus died, like, you know, Jesus died. And there are people before Jesus, like Abraham, Moses, those people who weren't there, who weren't Abraham and Moses, what happened to them? Oh, like the people in the Old Testament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they, they they didn't die because at, back then they believed that if you killed the lamb, the lamb's blood would atone for you. So if you sin, it was like Job. Whenever his his children would go, he would always make a sacrifice on their behalf in case they ever did anything. So they thought that the, the fresh blood of the lamb would atone for their sins. But when Jesus Christ came, he was the ultimate lamb 
who had the ultimate blood, who made the ultimate sacrifice, and he atoned for us forever. That's why when you always yeah. when you when you when you pray to God to forgive, um, so that he can forgive you of your sins, he, it's his blood that's being invoked. Amen. It's his blood. And he he, Jesus, was the final sacrifice, right? The lamb of God. The lamb of God was slain, right? God. God bless you, James. Fantastic answer. Yes, um, um, Darren, and then we'll go to Declan, we come to Ellen, and then we bring it to an end. I don't think today we'll go around because of the time. Okay. I wanted to say that I think uh, Moses and all the other people, if they're if they are going to heaven, they are not in heaven yet. Because when you read the book of Revelations, it says that when Jesus comes the second time, he that is when all the all his souls, all the people who, who have supposed to come to heaven, they will say, Please avenge our blood. They'll be saying all those things, and so they will go to heaven then, and not like the moment they die, okay, we are going to heaven. But I think Jesus was the exception since, well, he already lived in heaven. Are you telling me that Abraham's still in the grave? Like, I can just go over there and visit him? Is that, is that what you're trying to tell me, man? <laughs> I think we're going to Jerusalem next year. I could pay some visits. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, okay. I said that. Uh, there. What I'm trying to say is that Abraham, yeah, I know you could say, okay, rest in peace, Abraham, and all those things, but you shouldn't be expecting Abraham to say, oh, hi there. Oh, and by the way, thanks for the flowers. Uh, I think that Abraham is somewhere like he's asleep. Let's just say he's literally just dead. When when Jesus comes the second time, that is when everyone will just okay. rest. Maybe it will be another lesson we will talk about, but for now, we'll bring our lesson to an end. Okay, precious ones. Um, we'll go to Darren and, oh my, we'll go to, Esther, you have your hands up too? No, okay, so we'll go to Declan and Ellen and then we'll bring the lesson to an end and we'll continue next week, okay? Yes, uh, De Declan. So what I wanted to say was that I kind of agree with, with what Darren said because if, if let's say that someone dies and she um, he or she went straight to heaven, then you would basically like to die so that you can just go to heaven quicker. So immediately you are born, you just go and take a nap. Wow. Just go to heaven. But then, case, on, but then on the day of judgment, God will come and take all his people that believed in him to go to heaven with him. So that is what I just wanted to say. Okay, God in Revelation, God in Revelation God. though, isn't there like Abraham's bosom, like like a kind of paradise before heaven? Called it like like when we, we listen to the story of the uh, poor man and the rich man, the gap between heaven and hell. He said, "Put a drop of water on my tongue." I'm pretty sure he wasn't in heaven at that time. So like, is, then isn't it called like Abraham's bosom or something? Precious ones, if we keep going, we will not finish. So. We are going to bring our lesson to an end right now, and then we'll continue next week. James, James asked a question. Let's go all research, and then we can we can start that topic next week, okay? Uh, but before we end, Ellen, can you, uh, your hands has been up. Tell us what, what, what you want to share with us, and then we'll bring the lesson to an end. Well... After I did some a little bit of research, um, the part that Dar um, Darren said that um, we don't know whether it was the soldiers that um, crowned Jesus. If you read from John, um, John chapter nineteen, verse one to forty-two. It does tell you that the soldiers were the one that crowned Jesus. Fantastic. So I'm just Fantastic. telling all of you guys so that you know it. So did it cut them? So did it cut them? James questioned it now. So now, Ellen, you answered the part that Darren said that we don't know. Now we know for sure in John that what? It was, it was the soldiers that did that. Now, another research that we need to go do is that they, when the soldiers were putting that crown on, did they cut their hands? So let's all go research it and then we can continue from there next week. May the Lord bless all of you. God richly bless you. The blood of Jesus, God died on the cross, right? 
for our sins, for us, the blood of Jesus is so precious. Precious ones, let's use the blood of Jesus in whatever we do. God bless you. Fantastic discussion, fantastic um, contributions this afternoon. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe till we see all of you again next week as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. May the Lord bless all of you. Until then, it's bye. Bye. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.